Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and we're going to talk about academic self-efficacy some more today. Yay! And what we're going to talk about specifically is how to make a study sheet. Okay, what is a study sheet? Well, a study sheet um, is sometimes called, I mean sometimes we call it a study sheet, sometimes we call it a note sheet, Sometimes we call it a cheat sheet. <laughs> it just depends on what exactly you're looking at here. A cheat sheet is the one that most people don't like very much because it's not really cheating if you're allowed to take notes into the exam. So we'll call it a note sheet. Okay, the idea here is that with a study sheet or a note sheet, the di only difference between these two is that a study sheet you cannot take into the exam, the note sheet you can. And so, in terms of studying for the exam, your approach could very much be the same, okay? The only thing that's going to differ is whether you have to memorize it or not, and there are some strategies for that. Okay, if you have a note sheet that you are allowed to take into the exam, the note sheet or the note card or whatever amount of space you're allowed as notes for the exam is basically what this is meant to be is this is meant to be your aid. This is meant to be your safety blanket. This is meant to be the thing that you have if, you're e if your brain oozes out your ear as you walk into the exam and you cannot remember a single thing that you studied, okay? The idea here is that there are certain um, leniences allowed for the idea of like particularly science there are certain things that we would look up if we didn't know them. And so sometimes we allow you a sheet to jog your memory. Okay. It depends. You need to find out about the note sheet based off of your professor. You need to find out whether this can be typed or whether it must be handwritten. A lot of professors believe that handwriting the notes is a critical piece of learning, okay? So often it'll be a handwritten uh, index card, sheet, what have you. The idea here is that you're gonna go through several different iterations of this note sheet before you get to the one that you bring in the test because in the midst of making the note sheet, you are studying for the test. So the first iteration, the first version of the note sheet, and this will be true for the study sheet as well. So the, these versions are true for both. Um, there's going to be one thing that differs at the end. Okay. So the first version should be just a collection of everything that was emphasized everything that was emphasized by the professor, everything you spent time on. Some professors actually write their tests based off of how much time was actually allotted to that idea. Some professors write their tests, I'm one of those professors, that writes their test more about the most important stuff that's for your future. So in other words, what are the things that are absolutely critical for you to know in order to get to the next level. Almost always that corresponds with the amount of time you've spent on them. But sometimes in like a hybrid class or in other classes, you don't have a lot of time to begin with and you're going by whatever was the most confusing to the students in the class. That may or may not mean that time was spent on that particular issue. But you can also figure out what was emphasized by how important it is in the book. Does the book spend a lot of time on it? Because if the book spends a lot of time on it, it's probably important. Okay. A collection of everything that was emphasized every, in, in class or in the book, everything that, uh, that you think is going to be on the test. Now, why did I put this in a different color? 
because students are notorious for not really realizing what was important or not. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I do it too when I'm a student. So that is not something that you should just say, oh, I know what's going to be on the exam. Pasha. You double check, folks. You double check, you double check, you triple check. You quadruple check, so on and so forth. Why I'm putting a star by that is the best way to figure out what is going to be on the exam is by looking at old exams. If your professor puts old exams available for you to look at, you should be looking at those first and saying, my gosh, they ask this kind of question every exam for every year, for every semester, for the last whatever number of semesters. That probably is important, okay? So you're double checking it based off of old exams. And if you don't have old exams available to you, you are checking it out with other people in the class, whether those are TAs or PLFs. Uh, TAs are teaching assistants, PLFs are peer learning facilitators, SIs or supplemental instructors, all of these people who help in the class, who have taken the class before. That's who you're checking it out with. You're checking out with people who you know in the class. This is why it's good to have friends in the class. You form a, a quick study group before the exam and say, do you know what's going to be on the exam? Do you have a sense? What, what do we think is the most important? And you hammer it out together. And then you double check with one another. You cross check and say, hey, do you think that's important or not? Okay. You can do this online. You can do this in class. You can do this off site. All of these, this is, you can do this in many different ways so that you really have no excuse to not do this if before you go into the exam. Okay. So what you think you're, is going to be on the exam needs to be cross-checked with some other piece other than just your thought of, I think this, hey, I think this stuff was important. Okay? That's the first version. It's a collection of everything. The second version. The second version is where you start to hone it down. Maybe the collection of everything wasn't on a three inch by five inch note card and that's all you have for the exam. So the second version hones down, it, it kind of collects the information. You go through several pieces of, okay, do we really think this is going to be on the exam? And if so, how much of the exam is it going to be? Okay. The second version is focusing. You focus on what's the most important stuff, the stuff that either is the most important or the stuff you're most likely to forget. You focus your information based off of that, and then you color code it. So for instance, in chemistry, because that's what I teach, chemistry, you would put all the similar information together in the same color. So if we're talking about gases, everything that goes along with gases should be in the same color. Everything that talks about thermodynamics should be in the same color. Makes some sense, right? So the second version focuses the information and it color codes it. Sometimes that's all the versions you need. You don't have to worry about any other versions. Often with a note card, you only need two editions. You need two versions of it. The second version is going to be the one you've taken to the exam. Life is great. Unless you cannot get enough focused uh, in the second version, which means you would have to make a third. Okay, so first draft, second draft, that's usually enough for the exam for the note sheet. The third version really comes in, we're going to do this, actually we're going to do this over here, because the third version really comes in if you're making a study sheet instead of a note sheet. So in other words, if you're making a sheet that you cannot take into the exam, but you are using the study, then the third version needs to put this information in a way that you can remember. All right. And that's where maybe a concept map or a picture or something along those lines. You need to put it in a way that you can remember as you walk into the test. The way I used to do this is I used to do concept maps. So in other words, when I was focusing the information, I would put the big points in the middle and then I would put everything that's related to that as, 
as basically rays coming from the middle. And they would all go to different ideas. And I would connect those ideas based off of um, the connection. Uh, the, each of these lines would have a connection. How do these two relate to one another? You could also do an outline, so on and so forth. You need some kind of visual way to remember this. Because if you could just draw this on the exam and not even fill it in, if you could just draw this on the exam, and it will get you to all of the information you need. You can say, oh, right, this was the middle, and this was cell function. And this was you know, what functions uh, the nucleus, or really, there's lots of different functions. But you know, what, what role does the nucleus have? Or what role does the mitochondria play? So on and so forth. Okay. When you do this, then you don't have to fill in all of these pieces. All that you have to do is when you walk, you've already focused your information, you've already written it twice, so you probably know what's on your card. All that you have to do when you walk into, or sheet, when you walk into the exam, you would just draw whatever you did to focus your information on whatever scratch paper there is or on the top of the exam. And then you'd say, okay, this is this, this is this, you suddenly have a visual representation of what you're supposed to remember. That third version is very important for those of you who are not able to put a note sheet or take a note sheet into an exam. If you have to do um, uh, no notes whatsoever, that's fine, but you need to put it in a format that you can remember and easily depict once you've gotten into the exam. All right. Until next time, I bid you adieu.